insider Chad Ford said that Knicks rookie Kristaps Porzingis has a shot at being a top 10 player in the league and that New York absolutely needs to build around him. Ford also said it might make sense for the Knicks to move even more boldly into planning for their long-term future, and that could mean trading Carmelo Anthony for future talent. Mm -hmm. Stephen A. Wow. This is a new development. Wowzers, yes. Should the Knicks build around Porzingis? Hell no. Hell no. All right, let me be very, very clear, okay? Because I'm, I'm, I'm... We work with people here. Some of the times they do polls, they write articles, just like we say things they don't agree with, they say and do things we don't agree with. Ain't gonna call nobody out. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Mm -hmm. I think Porzingis is talented. I think he's got a future. I think he's got a chance. But to trade Carmelo Anthony, their best player, is asinine. That's number one. Number two, and more importantly, you know what really bothers me that no one is seeing a big picture about? Okay. Phil Jackson's being let off the hook. Phil Jackson, when I went off about Porzingis, it was not because he could not play. It was because he was perceived as being a project that would be ready to produce in three plus years. That was what we were told. I didn't see him. He was playing in Europe. I never saw the guy play. Yeah. What I was saying was, wait a minute. You the $12 million a year man. He ain't come here for no real building project. And Sam Hankey's doing that in Philadelphia. Uh, you ain't yes coming. Yeah, I guess sure. he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to look at him. No, he didn't talk about the Philadelphia 76. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. But we'll, we'll get into that later. What I'm saying is this. Phil Jackson was brought to New York because he's Phil. Yeah. You are the guy that can sit out there in free agency. If a LaMarcus Aldridge is leaving Portland, he's supposed to be thinking about you because it's Phil. If a Kawhi Leonard was a free agent in San Antonio, even though it was great, better for him to stay there and all of that stuff, he's supposed to at least consider it because it's you. Greg Monroe is not supposed to go to hell of Milwaukee mm. instead of you. coming. This is what Phil Jackson was brought here for. And the fact that everybody just glosses over it, now that he's getting hired, he gets to sit in the cut, chilling like it's nobody's business, like he's a regular GM making $1.5 to $2 million. This man is getting paid $12 million. And all you got is this? A five-year plan? Magic, okay. sorry. No, I'm not buying that. Okay, but no. Chad Ford was on record before the draft. The Lakers should have taken Porzingis at number yes, two. And I think he was right. Well, listen. I, listen, Porzingis is not five years away from being pretty good in this league. He's already pretty good. Mm -hmm. He might be the rookie of the year this year. <laughs> I don't think so that's you, saying much. Well, you've got to embrace what that. You've you got to say, well, at least we got that. Well, again, towards, again, right? I, I, don't, don't get me wrong. Porzingis is, I, I like what I've seen. Yeah. And I'm not knocking Phil for it in that regard. What I'm saying is, I don't want to hear about a five-year rebuilding plan. We don't need you at $12 million a year if that's what okay. you're doing. You're supposed years. to, that's what I work, okay. I can live with that. All right. That's what I want to All hear. Right. I want to hear a five-year, do I look okay. like I got five years? Okay. But I'm seeing a Dirk, it, who, I'm seeing Dirk who can play some defense. That's what this kid is. No? Dirk? Yeah. Did you just say dirt? I did say it. Dirt, dirt, I just dirt? said it. Are you just insulting this kid? Yeah, I didn't insult him. Knicks I'm, I'm, rookie I'm was at least three double doubles in his first seven games. Since 20 Patrick years old. Ewing He's seven three and can ago. move. He better do something. We got to move on. Wes Welker had finally found a place to play, and we'll tell you where it is after the break. First Take is brought to you by the makers of Dr. Scholl's Massaging Gel Insoles. Despite his concussion <laughs> history, the Rams, bless you, Thank have you. signed Wes Welker. <laughs> We're having um, a lot of sneezes. Skip, do you fear for uh, the Rams in terms of Welker's health? Boy, I think he should fear for his own health. But Stephen A., my, my opinion of this is if Wes Welker wants to risk his long-term health, that's his right. I just say God bless you. It's his right. I am worried about him, though. But it is his right to do it. I wish him nothing but the best because he's good enough to be in this league talent-wise. Just those concussion issues is a problem. As for Stedman Bailey. Mm. Here we go. Give me go. a camera, please. Oh. <laughs> Stay off the weed. Sorry I had to say it again. But we can't help ourselves. We're assuming, of course, is, you know, violation of league drug policy, four games. What else is there to assume, right? Thanks for joining us. Jeezy's oh, oh, here tomorrow. Can't wait.
The Bears get their third victory of the season, defeating the Chargers at Qualcomm 22-19. Phillip Rivers threw for 280 yards in the loss, giving him 3,033 for the season. That marks his 10th straight season with at least 3,000 passing yards, tied for the fourth longest streak in NFL history. Pretty impressive. But his team has just two wins this season and holds the last spot in the AFC West. Skip, how would you rank Philip Rivers' career? I don't know for sure. This guy baffles me. He's always baffled me. We did a show in Miami around the time LeBron broke through and won his first ring. Remember that over yep. the Thunder? Mm -hmm. And we had a question in the show about Philip Rivers. And or no, I'm sorry, it's about which athlete needs to break through now. Wh who has the most mm -hmm. pressure on him? So I'm going back. What, what is that? Four years? Five years almost now? Four years? And. I pick Philip Rivers. He needs to validate his his sort of top ten ranking as a top ten or even top five quarterback statistically with some something big in the playoffs, a big playoff run. And the only way I can rank him is to compare him to your guy Eli Manning because we have to go all the way back to how this started, yeah. right? 2004 draft. Mm -hmm. Okay, Eli says nope. The Manning family says, nope, to San Diego. No, nope, we don't want San Diego. We want to be in the Big Apple. You know, right. we want to play for the Giants. That's right. Smart move. They, they force a trade. And so the Chargers get Phillip Rivers, effectively, and they get picks with which they took Sean Merriman and Nate Kading, the kicker. Mm -hmm. Pretty good deal. Yeah. Well, pretty good. Okay. And what has happened? Okay, this is my bottom line on Phillip Rivers. Every time I watch him, I feel like versus Eli, Philip Rivers comes off to me as, as a constant overachiever. Eli comes off to me as a little bit of an underachiever because I, I think Eli has big time ability and we talked about his blue blooded sort of background and, and the, 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 the base of confidence that he has, the bedrock of confidence that, that was instilled in him by his father and his big brother, all of his brothers. Yep. And, in, in Philip Rivers, I always see a guy who comes across as a hard luck loser to me. He's always like, eh, it's just, I'm so close, but in the end, I'm a hard luck loser. Mm -hmm. We got injuries, didn't work, you know. He was up at the podium last night saying, well, it's just, we just don't have enough to quite, we're, we're so close, but we just can't get over the hump. We've been so close in all these losses this year, can't quite get there. Mm -hmm. And Eli has been the occasionally lucky winner. But mostly, when we look at Eli's career, he's got two rings, and that's all anybody really cares about is, and I think they were like near miraculous playoff runs, but, but I gotta give it up, because he's got those two rings, right? He shows, okay, in the Gatorade commercial, mm -hmm. two rings. Okay, great, I, I'm impressed. Philip Rivers got none, and it, it's starting to feel like he's, he's 33, almost 34. Mm -hmm. Eli's now 34, going on 35, mm -hmm. but it's starting to feel like Rivers is always going to be a little bit of a hard luck loser. He's got talent, he's got the quirky motion that he can't, he never could quite get rid of, but he, he still comes across as something of a, a gutsy gamer overachiever, while Eli can be beautiful to watch. When he gets in rhythm, he, he looks like a top five quarterback. He looks like the prototypical NFL franchise quarterback to me, Eli Manning. I mean, nobody throws a prettier deep ball or when he when he gets in rhythm. Now, he'll throw picks, but man, when he gets going, there's nobody who scares me more to root against him than Eli Manning. So that's how I assess what the, the hard luck loser that can be Philip Rivers. Excuse yes. my naivete. What does that term mean, hard luck loser? You know, that, that, that nothing's ever going to quite go right for Got you. Got it. Okay. You know, like, like you're always going to get the, the worst break possible. Like you're always... It's, Got it. It's like Brandon Whedon said about his life. He says, I've, I've always been unlucky in my mm -hmm. life, and it feels like Philip Rivers... Even though he's won four playoff games, he's lost five. You know, it, it's like he gets close, and they got up to Foxborough in 07 to the AFC Championship game. And then I'm not sure what happened to Ladanian Tomlinson, but he yep. got into it with North yep. Turner, and they had yep. some conflict nope. going on, and it just wasn't quite right. Mm -hmm. And it was Tom Brady, and that's as close as you're ever going to get. And then Tom Brady went on to lose to Eli in the Super Bowl. What has made the Giants successful is not just the requisite abilities of a Philip of, of an Eli Manning. It's the continuity that they've 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 blessed him to have that, that's with fair. Tom Coughlin. Yep. I've lamented on at least two occasions that Tom Coughlin should have lost his job sure. over the years, missing the playoffs five of the last six years, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Before he won the Super Bowl, the first go around mm. in twenty seven, 
in two, 2007. Yeah. He was on a hot seat, mm -hmm. okay? And then they went on and they won the Super Bowl. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that somewhere along the line, the franchise thought about Eli Manning and trusted Tom Coughlin because of Eli Manning. If a quarterback change had took place, I think Coughlin would be gone. And the reason why is because if Eli's your franchise guy, then you have to have the guy there that he's most comfortable with mm -hmm. and who can get a lot out of him, which is Tom Coughlin, who we all know to be an exceptional coach. I'm just thinking about his record. Mm -hmm. Certainly not questioning his competency in any way. When I think about the San Diego Chargers, Skip Bayless, you know what I go back to, man, that I can't let go of to save my life, Skip? I go back to the San Diego Chargers and the year of 2006 when they were 14 and 2 and Marty Schottenheimer Marty, yeah. was yeah. their coach. Yep. Cam Cameron was their offensive mm -hmm. coordinator. Wade Phillips was their defensive coordinator. Our very own Rob Chudzinski, who's now the offensive coordinator in, in, in Indianapolis, yeah. yep. was your tight ends coach at yep. that time. They are 14 and 2, but they lose in the playoffs. They lost their divisional playoff game. They immediately make a change after the 14 and 2 season, apparently because Al Smith wasn't getting along with uh, uh, Schottenheimer and all of this other Who'd stuff. Who did they lose to? Do you have it right there? Um, I'm sorry, I can punch it up in just oh, a that's second. Fine. Don't worry. This, about all right, it. it's it all right. Like it's okay. Seemed like they lost to. No, no, no. I, I mean, I give it to you. I, no, I give it to you right now. They lost to New England. To New England, okay. 14 to I got, three. I got, I got. 14 it, to three. Was, that was a Brady that's game. Right. Out that's of course, out it was. That's right. That's right. That's right. So what I'm saying to you is this: from that point forward, you had North Turner. Yep. Now, North Turner did have a successful couple of years. One year he was 11 to 5, another year he was 13 and 3. Mm -hmm. But they didn't win playoff games then either. Somewhere along the way, from an organizational perspective, from a structural perspective, something is missing with the San Diego Chargers. And that has affected and contaminated Phillip Rivers. Because when I look at Phillip Rivers, who's in his 12th year, and I see him throwing for over 3,000 yards, and I see a QBR in the 60s, and I see a quarterback rating of 100, and I see him completing about 68, 69% of his passes, I'm like, excuse me, th th those are the kind of things you want from your quarterback. So regardless of what struggles, and I, I, I love the analogy that you use about him being a bad luck kind of guy, because in a roundabout way, what you're saying is, it ain't him. He's a part of it, but he ain't the reason. Mm. And so that's the sad part about it. He's wasting away in San Diego. And I know he's got, I mean, his, him and his wonderful wife just had, what, their eighth mm. child, I believe? Eight. Okay, eight. Okay, eight is enough, I guess. Maybe it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't yeah. know. That's the name of a television yeah. show from a long time ago, for people who don't, who don't remember. Well, that was way it, before my time. Yeah, you stop it. <laughs> so here's the deal. I'm looking at it from that perspective, and I understand him wanting to be in San Diego. The weather's mm -hmm. beautiful. It's nice. You're very comfortable out there. They treat you like royalty. You're Phillip Rivers. But if you want to win, he might be better. I know he's got no trade clause in his contract. New four-year deal, I believe, for the season. Yeah. I know all of that. But he might be better off going to... Let me tell you something right now. Could you imagine what Phillip Rivers would do with the Jets? Could you imagine what he would do with a few other teams. Could you imagine what he'd do in St. Louis? Mm. I mean, could you imagine that? I mean, I mean, if you give the man some weapons and you give him a defense that he can rely upon, mm -hmm. okay, and a coach, because listen, let's face reality, we may disagree with Jeff Fisher from time to time, but the man can't coach. Sure. I mean, it's not like he can't coach, okay? Mm -hmm. He knows a thing or two about what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, listen, we can't knock him because he's making decisions bigger than football. Mm -hmm. It's about his family. But strictly from a football perspective, I think San Diego has proven they're not worthy of him. Mm. They're not worthy of him. Well, to your point, bottom line, Eli versus Rivers. Eli. E Eli has thrown 62 more career interceptions mm -hmm. than Phillip Rivers. Wow. And one more. And, and still one more. I know. It's unbelievable that trade even happened back in the day. <laughs> Moving on, Kevin Durant returns home tonight to play the Wizards. How should the fans greet the soon-to-be free agent? That's the discussion on the other side.